Reminder, we do have our student advisory panel that starts in about a half an hour, but it goes till one o'clock. So uh, even after this course is over, you can go ahead and go over on over and share your thoughts with the department, with the uh, School of Computing, College of Engineering. Uh, there is probably going to be free pizza over there. It's all in Avery 348. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick it up last, where we left off last time. Uh, we've already introduced array-based lists, and then we got done with our implementation of a linked list. Uh, but then let's remind ourselves why we even started looking at linked lists. Uh, before that, let's check. All right, remember that we are online, so if you have any questions, go ahead and post to the uh, YouTube live stream here. Uh, otherwise, uh, we started looking at linked lists because we had the observation that array-based lists have really bad performance when you start adding elements to the start, right? Uh, and then linked lists, when we ran the same experiment, we, it seemed to have good performance when you added elements to the start. And I want to go through that experimentation again a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, more in depth so that we can see if we can uh, discern some sort of a pattern here. Remember that this is our setup here. And again, I apologize for the, uh, the second one, the lamp is out. Uh, but otherwise, what, I, what I'm doing here is I'm starting a timer. Uh, and I've got a linked list, and I'm adding a bunch of elements to the start. It doesn't matter what we add to the start, right? Uh, and we're going to add 100 things to the start, all right? And we're going to time that. So if I run this, right, then it's almost imperceptible. It's 0 .001 seconds. So I've set up a, a grid over here. Now, if you were actually to do this experiment in real life, you'd want to repeat this over and over again and take an average. But just for demonstration purposes of obviously, uh, this is going to be OK. This is just going to be enough, right? So 0 0.001 seconds, right? Lightning fast, because there's only 100 things in there, right? So let's come back over here and see if we can start to discern a pattern. If I go up to 1,000, in other words, if I increase the size of the list by a factor of 10, right? An order of magnitude greater. Right? Uh, now, because it's 10 times bigger, I would expect it to be about 10 times slower, right? And if I run it over and over again, right, then it's still imperceptible here. Right? That's because all of the inputs are really, really small. So let's go ahead and kick this up to 10,000, 10 times even bigger. Right? Right? Still same. So let's go ahead and note that down, 0 .001, 0 .001. Eventually, we're going to start seeing a difference here. Right? If I kick this up to 100,000, right? there we go, right? then that was about 10 times slower. 0 0.001, right, is nothing. 0 0.009 is nothing to us humans. But if you look at the trend there, that's about 10 times as big. I'll go ahead and note that down over here. But let's go up to a uh, 1 million, right? Now, if this trend holds, if we go up by a factor of 10 and it gets 10 times slower, I would expect this to be about 0 0.0 what? 0 0.1 seconds? Right? About that, right? It starts, to, uh, it starts to get a little bit even more, right? And it's consistent now. Uh, let's go ahead and note that down, that it's 0.162. Right? In other words, if we go up by a factor of 10 here, then the time that it takes to insert all those elements at the front of the list of a linked list, remember, we've got a linked list here, and we're inserting things at the start, the time goes up by a factor of 10. Right? Again, for small elements over here, 100 to 10,000, it's imperceptible. There's no difference at all. But once we ramp it up to larger and larger lists, and by the way, none of this is big data yet. One million integers, that's four megabytes. That's it, right? Who cares? Uh, now let's go ahead and run the same experiment on a linked, uh, on a, uh, not a linked list, but on an array list, right? The array list that we developed. And again, we're going to see the same basic trend for small input sizes here, 0 0.01. So no big deal, right? A linked list and uh, an array-based list, they're going to be the same. If we kick this up to 1,000, oh, we start to see some perceptible differences here, right? at least perceptible as far as a computer is concerned. So if we're an array-based list, if we're inserting things at the start, we had the same performance on a size 100. But now we start to see that it's, the performance is starting to degrade with respect to uh, adding things at the start. Let's go up to 10,000. Right? Now, if we had the same type of uh, behavior, for an array-based list of adding things to the start, and it's uh, we go up by a factor of 10, it gets 10 times slower here, I would expect this to be only about 0 0.05 seconds. But it's not, right? It's, it's much, much larger. Right? If I run this again, we'll see this behavior of 1.62. Right? And the only change that I made was the type of list that I'm using here. 
So 1.62. Oops, sorry. It was 0.162, right? Thank you. There we go. All right. Well, again, if I go up by another factor of 10 to 100,000, right? Then uh, if it was the same behavior as before, I'll expect this to be about 10 times as slower. In other words, about two seconds or one and a half seconds. certainly passed on one and a half seconds right now, right? Does anybody remember the behavior when we uh, introduced this and then we switched over to linked lists? It's about going to be about 16 seconds, 13 seconds, 15 seconds, about that, right? So we're already in human perception here, right? 13.62 seconds, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not acceptable at all. Predict, right? If I'm going up by a factor of 10 here, this is about a factor of what? 100 times as slow. I'm not even going to run the experiment for 1 million because if that same thing holds and it's 100 times as big or 100 times as slow, 13 seconds becomes what? Yeah. Uh, it would be a lot. 1300 seconds is going to be. The first, one, uh, the first one goes up by factors of 10, yes, right? because we're going up by factors of 10 on our input sizes here. But this one right here is going up by factors of 100, 100, 100. And 13 seconds will become 20 minutes. I'm not going to run that. Right? So you might be asking yourself, why don't we just always use linked lists? Right? Array-based array lists? The, no, they're, they're junk. Right? We're only going to use linked lists. Let me switch it around. What happens when we insert at the end of a linked list? What happens when we insert, uh, insert at the end of an array-based list? Okay, so let's come over here to my array-based list here, and I'm going to make one change that we uh, the, uh, from the last time. Remember that when, whenever we wanted to grow the list, we went up by a factor of 10 here. I'm going to go up by a factor of 1,000 here. Right? It's just a number. We'll talk about that later. Uh, let's go ahead and do the same experiment for an array list. But instead of adding it to the start, I will add it to the end. Do you remember the function that we used for that? I think it was just add element i. Right. Now, we didn't label it as add to the end. We just, that was the default behavior, append. Okay. Let's run this again. And again, we're getting imperceptible time, 100. A factor of, one, uh, of 10, 1,000. So 0 0.01. I'll go ahead and call both of those 0 0.01. Uh, oops. I'm doing it over here, and then we'll, we'll examine this in a second here, after we've gotten past the small numbers. 10,000 is going to be, oh, wow, 0 0.002, right? 100,000, 0 0.023, right? Compare that to 0 0.023, right, to 13 seconds. Way, way faster. And in fact, I feel comfortable about going up to a million here because I don't think it's going to take 20 minutes. It's going to take a little bit of time, right? But only three seconds instead of 20, our predicted 20 minutes. Right? All right. So array lists aren't looking so bad with that other operation. I wonder how linked lists look with that operation. In other words, adding something to the end of a linked list every single time, right? My linked list now. There we go. Let's run it again. Imperceptible time for 100, for 1,000, for 10,000. Right? So, oh, now, now it's getting kind of big, right? 0, 0, 001, or uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it like this. Uh, and then 10,000 is what? 0 0.09 sec seven seconds? Point, right? All right, let's kick that up to 100,000. There we go. While we're waiting for that, let's start looking at this trend. Going from 0 0.001 to 0 0.9, 0 0.1, that seems also like 100 times as big, All right? So is it done yet? Yeah, 10 seconds there, 10 seconds, right? This is essentially 0 0.1 seconds. So 10 seconds is 100 times as big, about, right? And these are things that aren't exact because of course it's experimentation, it's an empirical, tests that we're running here. Again, I don't feel comfortable going up to a million. Why? Because if this trend holds, 10 seconds becomes 1,000 seconds. seconds, which is about 20 minutes. Right? 
about. So, no, you can't just throw out a Rayless here. You have to be careful. Yeah? It's because of their design. In a Rayless, it's easier to, add, to, to increase the size and add it to the end, but if you're doing adding to the end of a linked list, it would have to go through each of those previous links. That's exactly. Do you remember the story of the painter that I gave last time? The guy that, all, that didn't pick up the paintbrush or the paint bucket with him every single time, and all he did was go back to the beginning, <coughs> dip his paintbrush, come back all the way over here. He was spending more time walking back and forth uh, in front of the fence than he was actually doing actual painting. And for this reason, your same observation here of how do you add something to the end of a linked list? You have to start at the beginning, traverse all the way to the end of the list and add it there. Right. Can anybody suggest a, an improvement on this linked list uh, implementation that maybe we don't have to start out at the beginning all the time? What if we're only keeping track of the head in our linked list, right? What's the other thing called? The tail, right? I heard it over there. Right? What if I kept track of both of those things? Right? And I updated them both throughout the entire process. I won't do that. I won't go through, uh, through that exercise. But now I can add stuff to the end for free, right? Just as efficiently as I can add stuff at the beginning for free. Right? So does, it, does that solve all my problems? Now we can throw out array lists. What about the middle? If you want to insert something, you now you're just painting from both ends instead, right? Uh, so linked lists, array-based lists, right? They're good for one thing or the other, or you have to be careful, right? What is your application? Are you always going to be inserting something at one end, or are you going to want to have that random access that an array provides because you want to do a binary search? Uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Knowing the subtle differences between these two, right? Knowing when to use a linked list and knowing when to use an array-based list, that, well, that's the difference between a programmer and a computer scientist, right? Yeah? Just as a question for thought, it's possible to get the head and the tail. Mm -hmm. That makes me think it's possible to go through the links and just ask for a specific link. Hold that, that thought. The, we'll, we'll look at a couple of variations here. Uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and make our observations here, right? That everything switches around. No, uh, the performance simply, uh, you know, reverses with each when you change the end of the, uh, or change the operation. And there are operations that are good on one and operations that are bad on the other and then vice versa, right? It really depends on which one you're doing. Uh, but there are variations, as you, are, uh, as you just uh, observed. What, what else could we do, right? Uh, we could have what's called a doubly linked list. I should have brought this up, just a second. Uh, my iDrive and uh, lists here. There we go. All right. Here's a doubly linked list. And you'll observe here that we are keeping track of the head and the tail, right? So we can do really, really inexpensive operations at both ends. Not only that, but we're not stuck traveling in one direction anymore. Instead, we can travel in both directions. Right? That way that you can start at the tail and go to the middle, or you can start at the head, uh, the head and go to the middle, or something like that. You can, and you, it, this saves us a lot of work, because remember when we were doing the actual implementation of a, uh, uh, of a, of a linked list? Right? We, uh, we, we wanted these two nodes, and so I got this node, and I went to the next node. Well, I don't have to do that anymore, because I can traverse back and forth. All I need to do is get this node and I can get the one right previous to it. I don't have to stop short and get the next one. That's called a doubly linked list. Uh, you keep track of not only a next, but also a previous. So, sorry, variations. Variation, variations. Bring it back over here. Variations. One of those variations is going to be a doubly linked list. And how would you do it? Well, here's our linked list implementation. Keep track of the head and the tail. Right. Uh, and what does our node look like? Well, our node has an element and a next. So what would it look like if we wanted to support a doubly linked list? Next and previous. All right. uh, again, I won't do that. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Uh, again, you can also keep track of the tail. So you, you can start at the end of the linked list. Or you can have what are called circularly linked lists. So I've got another picture for that. Let's bring that over here. Right. And here we go. There's a circularly linked list. Regular, a regular linked list, they end, right? And then they fall off the edge of the world. You, you, uh, in Java, we uh, used uh, the null pointer 
the null reference to indicate the end of the list. This one doesn't. Instead of falling off the edge of the list, you come back right, uh, right where you began at the head. You can keep track of the head, you can keep track of a current node, right? And then you're always just going around in a circle, in a circle, in a circle. Uh, usually I would give the example of a token ring network where you've got this network of uh, individuals and, or individual computers and then each one has a time slice on the network and it goes around so that nobody, else, uh, nobody is uh, uh, talking at once and everybody gets a turn to talk. Uh, you don't know what token ring networks are anymore because you've got routers, right? You don't have LAN parties anymore, do you? No. Uh, instead, your, your internet connections nowadays are good enough that you don't have to bring your giant PCs together into one room and, uh, and, and link them all together for, a, uh, for a low lag time. Instead, that's what we had to do back in the day. Right? Uh, instead, of the example that I like to give is in my VR course recently, uh, they were developing this really cool game where they have, uh, they have this like, time travel kind of thing. And they've got this uh, time travel gun where if they point out an, uh, an object, it goes 10 years in the future or it goes tw 10 years in the past. Right? Uh, for example, the, the examples that they gave me are it starts back in the 50s and they've got a piece of paper. They zap it, it becomes a typewriter. Right? They zap it again, it becomes a computer. They zap it again and it becomes a tablet. They wanted to zap it again and go back around to the beginning. And they were asking me, how should we do this? And I said, hey, that sounds like a great application of a circularly linked list. Right? Because once you're at the end, all you have to do is go right back to the beginning. Right? All right. So that's an one, oops, sorry. Uh, where am I? There we go. Uh, and another uh, variation here, there, there are dozens of these variations. We're not going to get into all of them. Uh, but another variation here is what's called an unrolled list. So our linked list, each node only held one element. This one we can modify so that it doesn't hold just one element, it holds m elements. This is kind of a hybrid between these two options. Right? This is a, a linked list, but it is also an array-based list in that each, uh, each element, or each node, excuse me, doesn't hold just one element, it holds an array of elements. Now maybe you can get the best of both worlds, right? And you can tune these things. Uh, and instead of M being fixed here, you can say, well, what's the best M for this system, right? What, uh, what kind of page memory or something like that will hold uh, M uh, variables that were, or M references that we're, uh, that we're, that we're trying to store here? Right? Uh, this gets into things like cache hits and cache misses and the real performance of modern computing, but that goes beyond the scope of this course. So there's yet another variation. And of course, you can take all three of these variations and mix them all together. And then you've got the ultimate list. Or as your observation, I don't have a picture of it, but I'll pull up a picture. Uh, you can also have what's called a skip list. And here's my Google image search result. Yep, there's the first one. So if you've ever been to a major city, right, you can get on public transportation. And you can go to every single stop along the way. right? If you get on a subway or a bus or something. That's called the local. That's what a regular linked list is here. Right? If you look at way down at the bottom here, if you go from station one to two to three to four to five, et cetera, you're stopping at every single stop. That's the local. Right? That allows you to get anywhere you want to go. Or you can take the express. For example, I need to get to station, I don't know, nine from one. So I'll take the express from one to four, four to six, get off on that station, and then start taking the local, or take a different uh, express and go from station six over here to station nine. As the name suggests, this allows you to skip a whole bunch of nodes. Right? That will potentially speed up operations. If you, need, if you need to get to the middle of the list and you've got a, a regular old uh, 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 linked list, right, you're going to have to start at the beginning and take the local train all the way to the middle. Or you can go ahead and take the express train right to the middle. Yep, uh, and now, granted, this gives you a lot of benefits. It's way more complicated to uh, implement. Uh, it's way more complicated to, uh, in, in practice, to actually use. Uh, why? Because eventually, it devolves into a regular old linked list, right? If you want to make so many connections, then it actually becomes more complex than a linked list. Why? Because you're keeping track of the linked list here, but you're also keeping track of these express trains going all, uh, through all these. Eventually, if you add every single possible, uh, possible link between every single possible node, the performance will degrade. Right, back to what we're used to over here with our empirical measurements. 
it's not taking, it's, it's going to take 20 minutes. It's going to take weeks. It's going to take months. If you want 10 million, a hundred million, a billion integers, right? There is no perfect solution for every situation. Uh, a, um, a hash table gets pretty darn close, but it's still not perfect, right? We need more here. So those are some variations. Uh, again, an unrolled list or a skipped list uh, where, uh, from, from those visualizations that I just gave you. I wanna look at another variation here that you probably are familiar with, or at least most of you are familiar with, called stacks. So those coming from a C background, tell me, what is a stack? Actually, no, forget that. Anybody coming from a non-computing background, what is a stack of dishes? It's a night, yeah, it's a bunch of them piled together. Yeah, piled, that, that sounds a little bit disorganized, right? There's a first dish, and then there's a second dish, and then there's a third dish, and then there's a fourth dish. That sounds a little bit more organized to me, right? Because if you need a dish, where are you gonna take it from? Are you gonna take it out of the bottom? No. What happens to all your dishes? They topple over and fall, right? Uh, where are you gonna take that dish? From the top, right? Now, suppose that you clean the dish. Right? You're done using it. You need to put it back on the stack. Do you shove it through down at the bottom or somewhere in the middle? Nope. You only work at the top. Right? A stack of dishes. When you think of a stack, think of a stack of dishes and make sure that you're thinking about glass dishes because you do not want them toppling over and breaking. Right? You're only going to work from one end, the top of the stack. Right? With respect to computer science, right, you have a call stack. Right? Right? Call stacks are when a function calls a function calls a function. So function A calls function B calls function C. You have this, these things called stack frames. How do you get back to the calling function? And you have this in Python as well, right? You've got a function that calls a function that calls a function. How do you keep track of where you've been, right? Just like, not Goldilocks and the Three Bears, what is it? Uh, Hansel and Gretel, right? These are called breadcrumbs. We're going to set a breadcrumb here on this function, a breadcrumb here on this function, a breadcrumb here on this function. Why? Because we wanna make our way back to the beginning of the, uh, of, of the trail, right? So visually, what does a stack look like? Let me go ahead and erase all this stuff. All right. all right, a stack is going to look like this, where we can put stuff in and we can take stuff out. Putting stuff in will be done at the top of the stack. We're gonna refer that as pushing, all right? You push something on top of the stack. We're going to refer to the operation of taking something off the stack as a pop operation, okay? Now, for those of you without a C background, we usually talk about this in the C course. Why do we, why, why do we use this notion of pushing something on top of the stack and pulling some, popping something off the top of the stack? Think about your dishes again, right? You're in your cafeteria. You don't have big giant stacks of dishes, right? That's, that's dangerous. Instead, what do you have? You have this spring-loaded mechanism where you're pushing the dish down right, and then the spring takes it down, and then there's this locking mechanism that holds it in place. So the operation of taking that, st uh, that, uh, that dish off the top, you're popping it off of that thing, right, it makes a pop sound maybe, right, and then you're actually pushing the dishes on, why? Because you want to get them down lower, right? You wanna put them in that spring-loaded mechanism. That is the, uh, no, that's my take on it. I have not been able to find a historical, or a historic uh, uh, point, uh, reference to, for that being the case. But that's why I believe it's a push and pop operation. If you think about dishes in a cafeteria, that's exactly what I think about, right? So let's go ahead and put some stuff onto the stack here. 23, Jordan, right? Yesterday I did uh, Rizzo, 44, right? Uh, there's, uh, there's Jackie, 42, right? If you know what I'm talking about, great. If you don't, that's fine too, right? All right, Jordan, everybody knows who I'm talking about there, right? Jordan is 23. If we're going to push Jordan onto the stack here, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go to the top and we're gonna put it down here. That's why I drew it like this. I'm drawing it like that stack of dishes in the cafeteria that it's going to hold it with that spring-loaded mechanism down here if you wanna think about it as a spring down here. Right? Now let's go ahead and put Rizzo on the top. Right? We're not gonna put Rizzo on the bottom or you know, insert him in any uh, arbitrary location. We're going to put it at the top and push him down. Then we're gonna take Jackie here and we're going to put him at the top. Now, if I wanna pull stuff out of the stack, right, I'm not going to pull a dish from the middle. Right? I'm not gonna pull Rizzo out here. Right? Instead, I'm going to pull a pop, right? pop, what's at the top of the stack here? 
I'm going to go ahead and grab Jackie and he, oops, I don't want all that. Sorry. There we go. Jackie. There we go. He pops off and he comes over here. Now we've got Rizzo and he gets popped off and comes over here. Now we've got uh, Jordan and he comes over here. Okay. Observe the order that they went in is what? The exact reverse order. That gives us what's called LIFO. We'll define that formally next time, but it stands for last in, first out. That's how stacks work. That's how call stacks work. Uh, that's how our stacks are gonna work. And get, I'll, I'll just let you guess how we're going to implement it using some sort of a list data structure. Right? So for those of you attending in person, thank you for coming in today. Otherwise, for those attending on the live stream, uh, we're gonna end it today because we do have a guest. Uh, but please stay here. Uh, he's going to be asking you questions. All right. So uh, I get to go because, uh, uh, but you don't get to go. Right.